We're taking some time this year to talk about climate change and health. A warming planet presents a number of health challenges, starting with the immediate dangers of increased heat, rainfall, storms, and wildfires. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. We started this deep dive on climate change and health with an overview of the issues. If you haven't seen that episode, go check it out, including a range of potential health effects from the more obvious to the not so obvious. To start with the more obvious, climate change is causing weather events that are a direct threat to human life. We're not going to lie. This is an anxiety-provoking topic, as is much of the conversation surrounding climate change. We'll thread in some hope, and if you start to feel like giving into despair, fear not. We plan to eventually discuss the moves being made to mitigate and prevent many of the bleaker things we're going to highlight. But first, the cold hard facts, because they will make up the foundation we need to take serious action. Global warming is making our planet, well, warmer. And while warm sounds nice, we're unfortunately talking about hot, like really hot. While we aren't total strangers to heat waves, which are a period of days where it's unusually hot, we're seeing them more often than ever before. In the 1960s, just about 60 years ago, we were experiencing around two heat waves per year in major U.S. cities. Now, we're experiencing about six per year. And these aren't your average 1960 heat waves. These events now last longer and are hotter than they were before. Across the globe, the number of people exposed to heat waves increased by about 125 million between the years 2000 and 2016. I probably don't need to tell you that humans don't do well in weather extremes. Heat stroke happens when the body can't control its own temperature via mechanisms like sweating. When this happens, the body's temperature can rise to 106 or more in a very short amount of time and can result in permanent disability or death if not treated right away. Between 1998 and 2017, around 97 million people were affected by extreme temperatures, resulting in over 166,000 deaths. Unfortunately, extreme temperatures aren't even the biggest of the immediate climate change-related threats to our health. Between 1998 and 2017, disasters related to climate change accounted for 91% of all recorded disasters. While extreme temperatures accounted for 5.6% of those events, storms accounted for more than 28%, and floods accounted for a whopping 43.4% and affected more than 2 billion with a B people. But wait a sec, did we just go from heat to storms and floods? I thought we were talking about global warming. It's true, folks. Global warming isn't just a heat wave problem. We've got other stuff to worry about, like floods, because those sea levels be rising. This is happening because seawater expands with heat, making water levels rise. Adding to that, Glaciers and ice sheets that currently exist on land, we call this land ice, think of places like Greenland and Antarctica, are beginning to melt in the warmer climate, and the resulting water eventually makes its way to the ocean. Since 1900, average global sea levels have risen by about six inches. Any guesses on how many of those inches happened in just the last 50-ish years? Four of them! This sea level rise contributes to a great deal of coastal flooding, but that doesn't mean inland areas are safe. We're also looking at more precipitation on a warmer planet, inland areas and all. And while precipitation is a fairly calm word, we aren't worried so much about gentle afternoon sprinkles as we are about flooding. Moisture in the atmosphere increases by about 7% per each degree of warming. And on top of that, the extra heat provides more energy to weather systems responsible for rainfall. This can lead to short but intense bouts of rain that increase the risk of flooding. Wildfires, which we'll get to in a minute, also contribute to flood risk. Fires and floods make strange bedfellows, I know, but it's true. Because fires eat up forests and vegetation, they remove all the stuff that would normally absorb a decent portion of rainfall. And in places where a wildfire is burned hot enough, the soil may actually repel water. Taken together, this is quite the recipe for flooding. Now that we're on the topic of rain, we may as well expand to a big rain dumper, the hurricane. Stronger and very destructive storms like categories 4 and 5 hurricanes are happening more often thanks to climate change. Between 1998 and 2017, 726 million people were affected by storms, including over 232,000 deaths. To be clear, it doesn't appear that climate change is increasing the frequency of hurricanes as a whole. 
it's increasing the number that reached the destruction level of a Category 4 or 5. The immense rainfall of the 2017 Category 4 Hurricane Harvey is estimated to have been made 15 times more intense by climate change. So how does climate change make storms more destructive? It turns out that this is somewhat difficult to study, but NASA breaks things down nicely for us. Hurricanes need four things to grow, two of which are warm ocean water and a lot of moisture in the air. Both of these things are increasingly available as the planet warms. With increased levels of moist air available, hurricanes can hold on to that and drastically increase their rate of rainfall. An increase in hurricane wind intensity has also been linked to climate change, likely due to both increased ocean temps and increased moisture in the air. And now let's come back to wildfires, because beyond the immediate danger they present to human health, they also cause later health problems thanks to their effects on air quality. Years with the largest amounts of acreage burned by wildfires have all come since 2004 and coincide with some of the warmest years recorded. And fire season has started reaching its peak earlier each year in the United States. At the end of 2019 and into the beginning of 2020, Australia experienced what was called Black Summer, thanks to many large and very intense bushfires. A study released after the fires detailed a connection to climate change. While climate change contributes to wildfire risk in many ways, one of the biggest is drying out vegetation via heat waves. We realize that we, as a health channel, have spent much of this episode discussing the mechanisms and outcomes of climate change more than any specific health problems. That's because all of these climate change issues have horrendous impacts on our health, both physically and mentally. Now, I did say that we would thread some optimism throughout, and I think we can all agree that it's about time for me to come through on that promise. While natural disasters are increased, and affecting many, many people. Resulting deaths have actually decreased in the past 50 years. This is likely due to our ability to predict and thus mitigate many of these disasters, think mass evacuations, and an increase in the tools we have to deal with them. We can prepare for and protect ourselves against climate change, which we'll need to do in combination with prevention efforts. We'll hit on all that in a future episode, but I'm throwing in that tidbit now so we can end on a lighter note. Although let's not forget that these protective tools are not currently distributed in a very equitable way, but we'll hit on that later too. For now, let's focus on some light while we sit together in this pretty dark tunnel. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode, which is the first in our series on climate change and health. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the episode, subscribe to the channel down below, and consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lilleholm, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.